you call them in? As we get into this, as <coughs> perhaps he may call some witnesses, I uh, <coughs> want to make sure that they're still under oath from either the last time <laughs> or we put them under oath. I believe that this witness has already been sworn in. Okay, good. Okay. 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 So I'll just so verify so with you. Well, I think we got enough people eventually <laughs> to figure out who's, who's been sworn in and who hasn't. By the way, I've had a new experience uh, this last week. I got all done with my income tax and I realized that I wasn't all done. <laughs> minimum tax yeah. and I, I got to tell you I have no idea what you're supposed to do <laughs> with that sheet of paper good morning good morning thanks for coming out on this lovely day <laughs> I don't think the sound is on not that he had much choice <laughs> yeah. I guess we ask you to come join us yeah. Okay, we ready to go? I think we're waiting for the sound to kick uh -oh. in. Did you pay the bill? <laughs> and I did not. Lieutenant Zellers, were you already placed under oath? Yes, the first day. Okay. Just, just remind you, you're still under oath uh, as a result. Fine. Go on. Okay. Well, let's return to where we were before. I believe the ball was in your court, if, I, if everybody's correct. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, that's, okay. yeah, I believe we had rested and we were, had moved into the uh, grievance case. Okay. okay. Please state your name for the record. Michael Zellers. What is your um, uh, position? I'm a lieutenant. With who? The McAllen Police Department. How long you been with the McAllen Police Department? 28 years. Um, do you know why you're here today? To testify in a disciplinary hearing. Uh, regarding who? Sergeant Lucas Torres. Do you know the, uh, the basis for the disciplinary action against Sergeant Lucas Torres? Um, just briefly that he was disciplined for spreading rumors and for, I guess, fixing a ticket. All right. And were those rumors about you? Um, I think in part they were, yes. Okay. And did you provide witness statements into the disciplinary action regarding the rumor case? I provide an IDC. All right. Yes. And did you provide any sort of witness statement or IDC in relationship to the uh, uh, changing of the ticket case? Yes, briefly. All right. Um, let me refer you to uh, your IDC in the rumor case, which is found in that notebook on the very first tab three and is found on page 34. If at any time uh, you'd like to ref uh, review that for your answers, please feel free to do so, and I'll be happy to take a break, okay? Okay. Um, in your IDC, you state that on March the 15th, 2014, you were asked by Captain Alcocer to keep an eye on shift three. Is that correct? Yes. All right. What, what time is shift three? Uh, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. All right. Why were you asked by Captain Al Corsair to take, uh, to keep an eye on uh, shift three? Because their lieutenant was out. Who was their lieutenant? I don't recall who it was at that time. Um, what did you do in relationship to Captain Al Corsair's request 
that you keep an eye on shift three. I just monitored the radio traffic and uh, if anything major came up, I would go out and assist them. All right. Uh, what shift were you assigned to uh, on March the 15th, 2014? I was working an overtime detail from 6 p.m. till midnight. Did you work a regular detail that day? I don't recall. Okay. Um, you in your IDC state that uh, you had uh, noticed that so uh, Sergeant Javier Coronado called in sick for shift number one. Is that correct? I believe I put that in my IDC, yes. And that you had already attained a copy of shift three, of the roster for shift three, and that you saw that Officer Guillermina Cavazos had also called in sick that day. Did you say that in your IDC? I believe so. Uh, when did you notice that these two people had called in sick on the same day? We get uh, sick leave reports from communications every day. They're part of the packet that every shift commander gets. And I don't remember exactly when, but I recalled seeing both of their names previously before. How did you come to notice that both of them had called in sick on the same day? Because I saw their names on the, on the form and they both called in sick on the same day. Okay, were they the only two people who called in sick on the same day? No. All right. uh, who were the other people that called in sick on the same day? I don't recall. Okay, but there were other people who called in sick on the same day of March the 15th, 2014, correct? Yes. All right. Um, are Guillermina Cavazos and Javier Coronado assigned to the same shift? No. Um, what shift was Guillermina Cavazos assigned to on March the 15th, 2014? I think she was assigned to shift three. All right. And how about Javier Coronado? I think he was assigned to graveyard shift. Right. They were different shifts, right? Yes. All right. And so when you uh, made the determination that a number of people had been out or called in sick on the same day. What did you do with that information? <coughs> I brought it up to the supervisors of those shifts. And who was the supervisor of that shift again? Um, it was two different shifts. All right. What was the supervisor of the shift for Javier Coronado? Lieutenant Humberto Zavala. Okay. And who was the supervisor for uh, Guillermina Cavazos? Um, the sergeant that I brought it up to their attention was Yolanda Flores. <clears throat> Did you do anything else after you brought it to the attention of Lieutenant Zavala and Yolanda Flores? Um, no, I mean, Sergeant Flores asked me how I normally handle that stuff on my shift. Mm -hmm. And I told her how we handled it, and that was it. When did you do that? When I brought it up to her attention. And that was that on the same day, March the 15th, 2014? Yes. Did you notify anybody else of the sick leave use of Guillermina Cavazos and Javier Coronado on March the 15th, 2014? No. Did you notify either Lieutenant Zavala or Sergeant Yolanda Flores of other officers had used sick leave on March the 15th, 2014? No. It was just Javier Coronado and Guillermina Cavazos that you brought that up with? Yes. Isn't it true that you brought to the attention of the membership of the Lieutenant's Committee that Guillermina Cavazos and Javier Coronado had been using the sick leave on the same day? Lieutenant's committee, I don't know. Lieutenant meeting, I'm sorry. No, I don't recall that. Is there not a lieutenant's meeting that is conducted regularly? Uh, we have one with uniformed services uh, where the captain has a meeting with all of us. All right. And did you bring that up? Did you bring that? Did you bring up the issue of Javier Coronado's uh, and Guillermina Cavazos' sick leave use to that meeting? I don't recall bringing it up at any of the meetings. Let me refer you then to 
to page 30 of that binder. I'd like you to read for yourself the first two paragraphs that's found on page 30 of that binder. And perhaps you can refresh your recollection of whether or not you told anyone else about the sick leave use is of Javier Coronado and Guillermo Cabal. Is this an affidavit by Elizabeth Trevino? Yes. Okay. Sorry, we had two people just come in. Were they? <coughs> This is Rosie Pedraza, Assistant uh, Civil Service Director, and I believe she works for the Cal Police Department of Sanitation Division. No, they're a witness. They're not one witnesses. of our witnesses, far as I No problem. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, did you discuss? the sick leave use of Guillermina Cavazos and Javier Coronado with the membership of the lieutenant's meeting? I already answered that. I told you I don't recall discussing it at any other meeting. All right, and if, if uh, Elizabeth Trevino files an affidavit that says that that did happen, is she lying? Maybe she believes that. I'm not going to call anybody a liar, but I don't recall her being there at the meeting. All right. How about... How about Yolanda Flores? If she had filed an affidavit that says the same thing, would she be lying? Um, I don't know. If she believes that, I'm not going to call anybody a liar again, but I don't recall bringing it up at any other meeting. You have never told anyone else, other than the supervisors for these people, that Guillermina Cavazos and Javier Coronado use sick leave, other than Lieutenant Zavala, and you tend to, I'm sorry, and Sergeant Yolanda Flores. Is that your testimony here? Those are the only people that I recall bringing it up to. What is the procedure for the reporting of possible policy violations? What are you supposed to do? Well, first and foremost, we're supposed to monitor and enforce the policy. Um, normally what we do on when it involves somebody from another shift is we'll bring it up to their supervisors mm -hmm. and let their supervisors address it the way that they see they, uh, is appropriate. You're not supposed to send that up? Not in every case. We have latitude of handling it at our level. Oh, something yeah, that, so something that's a minor infraction. A I'm, I'm I've got a Would you move that microphone up a hair yeah. okay. and, and perhaps speak up just a little There's bit? A unit that comes on here behind us. Okay. I'm having a little trouble here. All right. If you don't mind speaking up. Okay, sorry about Thank that. Thank you. So in what circumstances are you permitted to use your discretion and not send up a possible violation up? Well, it's it's really on a on a case by case basis on minor infractions. I mean we have to make the judgment. Um, that's why we're shift commanders and supervisors of the shift. We sent every single case up to the chief. He would be bombarded with IDCs every day. All right. Let me be back, refer you back to your, your IDC on page 35. I'm sorry, 34. Okay. And therein you say that after you reported or you brought uh, to the attention of Sergeant Yolanda Flores the possible sick leave use or abuse by Guillermina Cavazos, uh, that you left the conversation at that since Lieutenant Zavala supervises his shift his own way. Is that what you, you included in there? Um, well, you said on 35? 34. Less. Yes, that's what I put in there. Yeah, but that's not what you did, did you? You actually went and you talked to Sergeant Yolanda 
Flores, and you insisted, you insisted that she write up Guillermina Cavazos, didn't you? No, I didn't. In fact, I spoke to Sergeant Flores before I spoke to Lieutenant Zavala. All right. So let me refer you then Let me refer you then to page 32. I want you to take a look at page 32. Perhaps that will refresh your recollection. Go ahead and read the whole affidavit. Can we identify for the record what page 32 is? And for the purposes of the record, the uh, page 32 is the affidavit of Sergeant Yolanda Flores. Did you emphasize to Sergeant Yolanda Flores that Guillermina Cavazos needed to be written up for her use of sick leave? No, I didn't. That's your testimony? Yes. So if Yolanda Flores created and signed an affidavit that says on previous occasions Lieutenant Zellers would emphasize about Officer Guillermina Cavazos' sick leave pattern, she would be lying? That would be inaccurate. I've only brought it up one time to her. And when she asked me for advice, uh, it was how I handle it on my shift. And uh, writing somebody up would be, you, I would recommend doing that only after you brought it up to their attention and it continued. But what I relate to her was, you should at least call the person in, bring it up to their attention, and 99% of the time, that fixes the problem. But if you do nothing about it, they're going to keep on doing it, and other officers will, on the shift will see that they're calling in sick. And before you know it, you're going to have four or five people calling in sick. And that particular shift had a big problem with that. What is your responsibility as an officer with the McCallum Police Department in terms of responding to orders to produce a written statement or an order to create an IDC. What is your responsibility? As an officer? Yeah. If you're ordered to submit one, you submit one. Right. Um, and uh, are you prohibited from omitting certain facts, certain critical facts? You should include all the facts that you recall. All right. And actually, if you omit a, cre a critical fact, that's a, that's a breach of policy, is it not? It could be. All right. And, and, and in a general sense, if you are ordered to respond to a particular accusation or a particular allegation uh, and you leave certain things out, uh, is that considered minimization or minimizing? I don't know. That would be at the discretion of the chief. He would be I'm asking that. your opinion. Well, it would depend on the case. if. If they were intentionally leaving something out to try to minimize it, I mean. Okay. So can we at least agree then that there is a term called minimization, correct? I believe so, yeah. All right. And minimization is intentionally leaving certain things out, I guess, in a way to avoid uh, uh, a determination of impropriety. That could probably be one definition of it, yeah. Well, what would be your definition? I want to use your terms. Um, intentionally leaving something out so that it minimizes the impact of it. Okay. All right. And that's actually found in, in Section 9 of your personal conduct policy. Is that right? Let me, let me perhaps may I approach the witness. Sure. Let me show you what I marked as a penalty. Exhibit 5. This will be 5. And let me refer you to uh, page 47 of that exhibit. And this will be subsection E and then subsection 2.
Okay. All right. So that basically governs you, uh, an officer's responsibility to respond uh, either reports regarding uh, investigations or reports about officers truthfully, correct? Correct. And, and you're not supposed to admit things, is that right? It says you're not supposed to knowingly admit things, right? Omit things, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I want to stick with page 34 of that notebook. And you begin by saying that you were ordered to respond to Guillermina Cavazos' allegation that you were singling her out in some way and or spreading rumors about her. Is that right? Correct. Who gave you that order? I think OPR did. Okay. Wasn't Captain Alcos here? It might have been Captain Alcos said, yeah. What were the rumors that you were ordered to respond to? They were rumors that Sergeant Torres was claiming that I said to him. All right. What were the specific rumors that you were supposed to respond to? Um, the thing that I recall was that he was claiming that the reason I was enforcing the sick leave policy or bringing up the sick leave policy is because I'm jealous of her in some way. Um, any other rumors? None that I recall. Were you shown Guillemina Cavazos' IDC dated March the 18th, 2014, uh, prior to you submitting this IDC on March the 27th? I believe so, yes. Okay, so you read all of her allegations. I, I believe I read, read them, and then I had to give the IDC back to the captain. Okay. And were you shown Officer Guillermina Cavazos' IDC dated March the 21st, 2014, prior to submitting your IDC dated March the 27th? I was shown an IDC. I don't recall the date. All right. Do you know that Officer Guillermina Cavazos alleges in her March the 24th, I'm sorry, 21st IDC that you told Sergeant David Coronado that you were in a relationship with her and that she dumped you? Do you understand that's what she alleges? Well, first of all, there is no David Coronado at our I'm sorry, department. David Cavazos. David Cavazos. Um, I don't recall that. I don't recall that being in the IDC. All right. Let me refer you then page 25. I'll refer you to the one to the third paragraph in that document. Please take a chance to review it. Perhaps that will refresh your recollection. Can we identify the document for the record, please? For the purposes of the record, page 25 is a McCallum Police Department interdepartmental communication authored by Officer Guillermina Cavazos on March the 21st, true that in Guillermina Cavazos' March the 21st, 2014 IDC that she alleges that you told Sergeant David Cavazos that you had been in a relationship with her and that she dumped you? That's what the IDC says here, yes. All right. And you reviewed this prior to submitting your IDC dated March the 27th, 2014? I believe I did, yes. All right. Did you specifically deny Guillermina Cavazos' allegation that you told Sergeant David Cavazos that you were in a relationship with her and that she dumped you? 
Yeah, that's not true. No. Did you specifically deny it in your IDC? Did you say that the allegation that I told Sergeant David Cavazos that I was in a relationship with Guillermina Cavazos and she dumped me is not true? I don't recall. Did you even address that particular allegation in your IDC? I don't recall. You didn't do it, did you? I don't believe so. Take a look know. at your IDC again. What page is that on? That is found on page 35. Okay. 34 and 35. Okay. In anywhere in your IDC, did you specifically deny the allegation that you told Sergeant David Cavazos that you were in a relationship with Guillemina and that she dumped you? I don't think there's anything in reference to that in the whole IDC. In your IDC? Right. Do you hear deny at this time that you told Sergeant David Cavazos that you were in a relationship previously with Guillermina Cavazos? Yes. You deny that allegation? Yes. In your opinion, did Guillermina Cavazos lie in her IDC when she wrote that you told uh, Sergeant David Cavazos that you were in a relationship with her and that she dumped you? I would object to the line of questioning. I mean, if he wants to ask facts that this witness knows about, but now we're moving into opinions about what people are lied or didn't lie. I mean, the IDC is an affidavit say what they said. This so case I'm is not sure. You know, we're going to start getting into opinions of the witness, really moving beyond what, what he knows or doesn't know. Th this case is in relationship to whether or not rumors were being spread. The defense's position, the appellant's position, is that this man was the one who was actually spreading the rumors. And I want to get this man's opinion and testimony as to the various witnesses and their allegations that he, in fact, is the one who is spreading the rumors. Well, why don't you just ask him that? I thought, I'd, well, I'll do it again. If Guillermina had testified here in this proceeding that you told David Cavazos that you were in a previous relationship with her and that she dumped you, is she lying? Yes. You know Sergeant David Cavazos, don't you? He's worked for me, yes. And in your IDC, you say that about a year ago, Sergeant David Cavazos told me that he was working a secondary at a department store, Dillard's, and on two occasions, he saw Guillermina Cavazos and Javier Coronel together holding hands as they walked around the store. Isn't that in your IDC? Yes. Why would he feel that important to tell you? I don't know. You would have to ask him. Why did you feel it important enough to include it in your IDC? Because that explains exactly why I noticed these two people calling in sick on the same day. Was them holding hands at Dillard's a year previous a crime? No. Was them holding hands a year previous a violation of policy? No. That was just something that was important to be brought to your attention as lieutenant? No. That, I already answered that question. You've been disciplined, have you not, for comments that you have made to and with Sergeant David, Co David Cavazos? Not to him. With him? He was in the same room, yes. And you were suspended 16 days for those comments? Yes. And those were about a body part of a female of the, of a, of the McCown Police Department? No. They weren't? No. You weren't suspended for 16 days because of your comments regarding Lieutenant C. Alvarado? I was suspended because I was joking with an officer that was a friend of mine. I hadn't seen him in a while. I asked him where he was at. 
uh, where he had been. He said he was back in investigations. And I made the comment, oh, I forgot you're back with your mom. That's why I was suspended. David Cavazos was in that room at that time, was he not? Yes. And, that, and the officer that you say that you hadn't seen in a while and it was a friend, he felt uncomfortable, did he not? He didn't express any uncomfort at that time. He was uncomfortable enough to the point where he actually filed a complaint against you? Yes. And that uncomfort led to your 16-day suspension, did it not? Yes. And that complaint, your friend, that you say you hadn't seen in a while and you were joking around with, that was Officer uh, K. Baron, right? Yes. And Lucas Torres was a witness in that complaint process, was he not? I don't know. Let me ask you this again. You told Sergeant David Coronado, sorry, you told Sergeant David Cavazos, that you were in a relationship with Guillermina Cavazos and that she dumped you. Isn't that true? No, it's not true, and I've already answered that. You reviewed Guillermina Cavazos' IDC prior to the production and your submission of your IDC, right? Yes, I believe I did. And she alleges that while she was in the academy, you told her that she was a very pretty woman on several occasions. Do you understand that? Is that a question? Yes, do you understand that's her allegation? Um, I didn't know that that was her allegation. Well, let me refer you then to both of her IDCs. One okay. dated March 18th, 2014, and the other dated March 21st. You can look at them now if you like. What page are they on? Sure. They are on page 22 is the one on March 18th. You know, I'm a, and page 25. I'm going to lodge in another objection here. The, the witnesses testified that he was shown an IDC by Officer Cavazos, which he then had to hand back, and then he had to provide a, his own response, which he did. Um, and now I, what I see the line of question going is that we're going to go cherry pick or go point by point on those IDCs with the witness. I, I'm not sure what we're really accomplishing here. The witness has testified you know, what he did. We have that record. Uh, the line of cross-examination is, well, it says this and you didn't answer that. I mean, we could spend an awful lot of time doing that. Um, I don't anticipate. I, if, you know, if, if, if well, it seems to me that you know the papers speak for themselves, obviously, and to beat them up a, a number of times doesn't really get us a whole lot down the road. But uh, Your Honor, um, just briefly, I don't believe that my questioning will extend longer than five more minutes. Secondly, uh, this man has denied a critical element of this case and I seek to impeach him just briefly on a few things that he said that he read prior to producing his statement and that's what I'd like to do. Well, I, but I, he did I, produce the statement, right? And so the statement is really what's been put into evidence. Well, I, I mean, I, I, object, I don't believe this is a critical element of this case. What's the element, this is an effort to simply shift the focus of the case to where it really belongs, which is what did this sergeant do? And what did he say? That part is uncontested. This is simply a, you know, strategy, I suppose, to put, put some kind of responsibility somewhere else. But, I mean, we're here about what Lucas Torres did. And uh, we already know that, you know, there's separate cases involving this witness, but you know, we're here on this case. Now, if we're going to get it all confused and bring in all these other matters, I mean, again, I think that we're going to spend an awful lot of time here. If I could just respond to that one part, Your Honor. Well, let me respond to both parts. <clears throat> I understand what your concerns are, and you understand what my concerns yes, are sir. in this case. I'm 
going to give you your five minutes to finish with this witness, and then we'll move on. Yes, thank you. Would you please review Guillermina Cavazos' IDC found on page 25? And actually look at page 26. And read to yourself. The three paragraphs. You don't have to read them out loud. Which Just refresh three? your recollection. Which three? The only three paragraphs, the, the top three paragraphs found on that on that uh, page. On 25 and 26? Just 26. Okay. Isn't it true that Guillermina Cavazos alleges that while she was, uh, before she got into the committee, into the academy, and while she was working at the front desk, that you told her that she was a very pretty woman very often? She's alleging that, yes. Did you do that? No. Isn't it true that uh, when she got into the academy, uh, she alleges that you told her that you knew a lot of people and that you could get her inside information on almost anyone or anyone in the department. No, that's not true. No, isn't it true that she alleges that? Um, yeah, I guess so. Did you tell her that? No. All right. And isn't it true that in her IDC, Guillermina Cavazos alleges that you had told her prior to the publication that she had been selected and accepted into the academy? No, that's not true. Did she allege that? Um, yeah, I guess she did. All right. Okay. Did you tell her that? No. And isn't it true that <laughs> while she was in the academy, Yedmina Cavazos now alleges that you texted her several times while she was there? She, she alleges that, right? Yes. Did you do that? I don't recall. All right. So at least of the three elements that I just asked you, you specifically denied two of them, correct? And you don't recall right. on one of them? Right. All right. The very top, the very top of your IDC, you state that you were ordered to do what? Which page is my IDC on again? Your IDC is found on page 34. I was ordered to uh, respond to allegations that I was singling her out and spreading rumors about her. All right. Did you address specifically the allegation of hers that you told David Cavazos about a previous relationship? No, right? You didn't specifically address that in your IDC, did you? No. Right. You didn't specifically address her allegation that you said that she was very pretty very often while she was working at the front desk? No. Did you specifically address that her allegation that you told her that you knew a lot of people and that you can get inside information into almost anyone? You didn't, you didn't specifically address that, did you? No. Did you specifically address her allegation that you had told her prior to the publication and announcement that she had been accepted into the academy? Did you address that in your IDC? No. You breached policy section nine, subsection E two, where you then intentionally omitted things, didn't you? No. Your testimony here 
under oath that your IDC contains specific responses to the allegations of Guillermina Cavazos as contained in her IDC, either dated March 18, 2014, or March 21, 2014? Could you repeat that question? Sure. Are you saying here today that you sufficiently or at all addressed the specific allegations of Guillermina Cavazos in her IDCs? I feel that I did, yes. And the reason you say that is because why? What did you say in your IDC that you would consider to be a sufficient response to her allegations? I addressed all of the what I perceive to be policy violations. People can make all the allegations they want, but if it's not a policy violation, I didn't think that I needed to address that. You only said, you said the order was to address whether or not you were spreading rumors about her, correct? Right. And the only thing you said was that I was in no way spreading any rumors about anyone. Is that right? Right. That's your only answer to the allegation. Right. None of the other things were specifically either addressed or denied, were they not? Council is leaving out the first sentence at the first page by way of optional completeness, uh, which we get to do here. I'll let you, I'll let you enter your objection. any rumor Correct. about Officer G. Cavazzo. Well, he's manipulating the affidavit. It's improper. Then, then say the objection is improper impeachment and save it for rehabilitation, Mr. Novato. Hey, look, I'm going to tell both of you guys again. It's on paper. We've gone through it. We have his testimony. I understand it. Do you understand it? I do. All right. Then let's move on. What was your role and assignment on March the 27th, 2014? I was a lieutenant on patrol. What shift were you assigned to? I believe I was assigned to shift two. All right. Was Moises Garcia assigned to shift two? I don't recall. Was Domingo Reyes assigned to shift two? Yes, I think he was. You filed an IDC in relationship to a ticket changing case, did you not, in this, in this uh, arbitration? Yes, a short one. Short one. What was your role in that, uh, in that element? Um, the two officers, or yeah, one of the officers came up and reported that Sergeant Torres had fixed a ticket. Which and, officer? Uh, I think it was Moises Garcia. All right. Go ahead. And, uh, and Domingo Reyes confirmed it, and I told them both to submit IDCs so I could send it up the chain because it's pretty serious. And uh, I simply wrote an uh, IDC that they reported this to me on this date, and I was forwarding up the chain of command for the review. All right. Those IDCs then that were created by Moises Garcia and Domingo Reyes were done pursuant to your order, correct? Yes. And, and Moises Garcia was not in your shift, was he? I didn't say that. I said I don't recall whether he was on my shift. When did you order Domingo Reyes to create the IDC? I think that evening when it was reported to me that afternoon. All right, and that was that was on on May the twenty seventh, twenty fourteen. Sounds about right. I don't I don't remember the exact date. Did you review Domingo Reyes's IDC prior to producing your own IDC in this case? I believe I reviewed both of them. Okay. I, I should have signed off on them. I'm not sure if I signed off or not. Did you Usually review them prior to producing your own IDC in this case? Yes, I believe I did. 
And and the purpose of your review is to what? Of the other IDCs. What's the, what's the purpose of, of you as a supervisor reviewing these IDCs? To make sure that they contained all of the pertinent, pertinent information that they had verbally relayed to me so that when I sent it up the chain, they wouldn't have more questions and answers. Part of your role is to make sure that the IDCs are complete and accurate also. Isn't that true? Um, as, po uh, as accurate as possible. Well, how about this? At least as complete as possible? Yeah. Containing all the various factual allegations that could possibly substantiate a claim for a breach of policy, correct? As much as possible, yes. And as a supervisor, when you receive an incomplete IDC, what are you supposed to do? You usually have the officer either add, add whatever information is needed. Okay. If I want to have you take a look at uh, page 20. There's two, there's two 20s, uh, Mr. Zellers. Yeah, for, the, for the record, if you're referencing the ticket case, that's a second OPR matter and has its own page number. So, so. go to um, tab three in that binder. This is the second tab three. It's behind a 2B and a 1, 2. <laughs> And that's the IDC of Officer Moises Garcia, is it not? Yes, I believe so. And this is the IDC that you reviewed prior to producing your IDC in that case, correct? I believe so. And your signature is found on the bottom on February the 20th, I'm sorry, May the 27th, 2014, is that correct? Yes. And therein he alleges that Domingo Reyes said that he was instructed by Sergeant Lucas Torres to leave the citation on the top of his desk, correct? I believe so. And is that found anywhere in Domingo Reyes's IDC? Not that I recall. All right. I mean, these IDCs were written almost a year ago, so I don't recall. Well, let, let me, let me refer you then to page 21. Okay. Is that found in Domingo Reyes's IDC? Uh, no, I don't see it in there. Right. And and to you, as a supervising officer, when you first read this from Moises Garcia, that was a at least an element of a factual allegation of policy violation, was it not? Yes. In essence, keeping the evidence with the man who is alleged to have violated policy, right? Well, I mean. The evidence is her statements. I mean, the, the citation could be part of it, but I don't. The document itself, if, if the allegation was there was a changed ticket, the document itself is a critical piece of information, is it not? It could be, yes. How could it not be? In what circumstances would a case wherein it is alleged that a certain document was improperly changed, how could the document not be a critical piece of evidence? Well, we have electronic ticket writers, so in some cases, the, we don't have paper copies. I don't. I don't know if I really looked into um, whether it was an electronic version of it or a paper copy of it. Well, you knew it was because it said in Moises Garcia uh, IDC that 
Domingo Reyes said he was instructed to leave it on Lucas Torres's desk. Yeah. So it had to be a paper copy, right? Well, I didn't ask whether it was or not. And it's not found, that allegation is not found in Domingo Reyes's IDC, is it? I don't see it in there, no. And you reviewed Domingo Reyes's IDC prior to moving it up, right? Yes. Okay. Did you instruct him to add that element into his claim? No. May I have one moment, please? Sure. Pass the witness. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant, just to be clear um, on this um, citation issue, uh, which is at the, the second OPR case at tab three. Okay. Your, um, your IDC is at page 19, correct? Yes. Okay. And then the IDC from Officer Garcia is at page 20, and that of Officer Reyes is at page 21. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And so what, and uh, all of this happened, um, your IDC is in May 28, 2014, correct? Correct. I think one of them is dated the 27th, and the other ones are dated the 28th. Yeah. But in your own IDC at page 19, you're indicating that you were initially approached by Officer Garcia. Yes. Okay. Who was then advising you that he had been advised by another officer about um, Sergeant Torres having involved himself in the is uh, citation issue. Yes. All right. And um, what was it about, uh, so is it, what, what was it about that communication that caused you to exercise your discretion and require the, these two officers to submit their own IDC? Well, the, the way the citation was taken care of is contrary to policy, and since that's a, an official document, uh, the alteration of it outside of policy is pretty serious and I thought that the that the just the implication that a supervisor was asking an officer to fix a ticket could be perceived as serious too and so I thought it was important enough to require IDC's to send it up to have OPR investigate that now beyond um, it, it, would that be something that fell within the scope of your your duties as a lieutenant in the department? Yes. When something like this is brought to your attention? Yes. Okay. But you did not then, beyond sending it up the chain, do any further investigation into the matter? No, sir. And you had no other involvement in this matter other than to secure the documentation from the two other witnesses that had brought it to your attention? That's correct. And in fact, it looks like your your dealings were with Officer Garcia in, initially, not with Officer Reyes. Correct. Okay. And do you know what happened with this beyond that? No, I sent it up, and and they never asked me for anything else, so I don't I don't know what happened with it. Further right. questions? Do you have anything? I'm going to ask you just one question. Mrs. Ellers, I asked you earlier if Lieutenant, sorry, 
Lucas Torres was a witness in the case that got you a 16-day suspension. Remember that question? Yes. And you, and you say you didn't recall he was a witness. Right. Let me show you what I want as appellant uh, 16. I refer you to the last couple sentences there. Okay. I'm sorry, six. Do I get to see that? Yeah. And you're referring me to what part of it? All of it? The, the, last, uh, the last couple sentences. Okay. The very bottom. Okay, well, first of all, this is not an IDC from Lucas Torres. This is an IDC of a, of a different officer, Baron. The question was, uh, I asked him if Lucas Torres was a witness in the case that got him a 16-day suspension. Okay. Was Lucas Torres a witness in the case that got you a 16-day suspension? I don't know. Uh, if, does the document in front of you, Appellate 6, demonstrate that he's a witness? It just says that Kevin Baron mentioned it to him. I don't know if that would make him a witness or not. All right. So if someone hears something, that doesn't make them a witness in your mind? I didn't say that. I just said I don't know whether it would make him a witness in that case or not. All right. I'll pass the witness. No further questions. Okay. You wanna, you. Uh, Do you want this back? No, leave it there. Thank you. Okay. He can be excused. You what? I, I don't mind excusing him. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Here. If I can just take a, a quick break to use the, the restroom, that would be about five minutes. Okay. okay. And may I? Him. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm just clear. Are you offering this as a as a exhibit? Or yes. What, what exhibit Six. number is it? Okay. And you want five minutes? Yes, sir. All right. Am I excused? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes.
Okay, you may proceed. Would you please state your name for the record? My name is Lucas Torres. Uh, what is your rank with the McCown Police Department? I'm a sergeant. Sergeant Torres, how long have you been with the McCown Police Department? 29 and a half years. Right. Um, do you know why you're here today? Yes, because of the uh, disciplinary action that was taken against me. So. All right. And what kind of disciplinary action was taken against you? I was suspended three days for uh, Could you pull that microphone a little closer or whatever? All the way. Is that fine? Yes. It's better. A lot better, right? Thank you. I was suspended for a three-day suspension on the uh, allegations of uh, rumors and two-day suspension on a uh, ticket. All right. Now, from here on out, we'll refer to the three-day suspension as the rumors case and we'll refer to the two-day suspension as the ticket case, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Um, on March 17th, 2014, did you have a, a conversation with uh, Officer uh, Javier Coronado that formed the basis of the rumors case? Yes. What was your conversation with Javier Coronado? My conversation with him was basically uh, uh, about Lieutenant Zeller's uh, bringing up to my, to my attention about the sick leave that him and, uh, and uh, Officer Guillermina were uh, supposedly abusing. Where was this conversation held? It was there at the McCown Police Department in my office. Approximately when did this conversation take place? Uh, I know about, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the two days prior to uh, having a conversation with Coronado, Sergeant Coronado. All right. And who started this conversation? <clears throat> the, the one with the Lieutenant Zellers or? Uh, the one or about the rumors case. Okay. And you said you had a conversation with? Without Sergeant Coronado. All right. Uh, how did he start this conversation with you? He started the conversation basically by saying that uh, he asked me uh, if uh, the tennis editor was jealous of uh, other circumstances uh, surrounding the uh, the take, the uh, the sick leave. All right, and and uh, is that how we started it out? He said his lieutenant Zeller is jealous of something, or was there a prefatory uh, question, or how did the, would you describe for the hearing examiner mm -hmm. just how this conversation uh, began and unfolded? I, I brought it. We we met and. Uh, I uh, told him that Lieutenant Zellers had uh, brought it up to my attention about him uh, and uh, he had been calling him sick and, uh, and I basically told him, you know, I uh, alerted him. I told him, just be careful because I just felt that Zeller was up to no good. And why would you tell that to Coronado? I was concerned. What were you concerned about? I just was just concerned because uh, you have to speak up a little more to that microphone. The AC is on; we can't hear you. Yes, um, I was concerned because I just felt that Zellers had a. Um, he knew a lot of people in the police department, including the chief. Uh, but he had the power; he had the to do something about the about them, about both of them. What is the basis for your feeling that way? My, I basically was scared. I, uh, of who? Zellers. Why? I was scared of him because of the fact that, uh, like I mentioned, uh, that he was, uh, he knew the chief and very well. I mean, according to what he was, talking to me about him and uh i'm sorry i can't hear very well you can speak up. i can't either uh, sergeant Torres, i'm going to have to ask you to maybe uh, use your outside voice and, okay and really speak loud enough so we all can hear you yes i have another suggestion we could move up to that other microphone next to the uh, uh let's see if this one's loud what you got
Yeah, I think it's going to make her it's job a, I'm not gonna be able to hear harder than okay. she's not going to be sorry. able to hear. Well, stay there. Well, it's worth a try. <laughs> Now, Sergeant, I'm going to ask you one more yes, time. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. You yeah. hear me now? I can hear you. Don't okay. be afraid to talk as loud as I'm talking to you right now. Okay. Okay? You said you had a conversation with Officer Coronado, right? Yes. Javier Coronado, right? Yes. And, and you said this was about his uh, use of sick leave as reported to you by who? By uh, Lieutenant Zellers. Why were you told by Lieutenant Zellers about... Javier Coronado's sick leave use. Basically, to me, my opinion is he mentioned it to me uh, about three times on three occasions. Uh, to me, it was a personal vendetta that he had against uh, Guillermina and uh, uh, Sergeant uh, Coronado. Why would you think that there was a personal vendetta? Because of the, the, the comments that he had told me about him when did he make comments to you? When I used to work under him. When was that? I, I say about, about two years ago. All right. What kind of comments did Lieutenant Zellers make to you uh, about those two people? Basically, what he was telling me was that, uh, can you hear me? Can you, you can hear me? I can hear you, but okay. you can still speak louder. Yes. Uh, it all started because of... Uh, it all started when he told me that they were, he was seeing Guillermina when she was in the academy. And uh, he had told me that he was having some marital problems with his wife, uh, Lieutenant Zellers, and uh, that he was starting to see, uh, have a, a relationship with uh, Guillermina. When did he tell you that? And this happened about uh, two years ago when I was working under him, directly under him. And so when it was reported to you that Javier Coronado uh, was abusing his sick leave, and this was reported to you from Lieutenant Zellers, why did you think then that there would be a, a vendetta or a problem there? It was because of the fact that he was bringing it up to my attention. And I told him, I told him, you need to bring it up to your supervisor, which is your captain. The proper procedure is to talk to your captain, not to me or to any other person. You found it through your, through your, uh, your, uh, your uh, supervisor, which is your captain, do an IDC, it goes up the chain of command, then it comes back to us. Instead of talking to me or to some other, uh, to Yolanda uh, Flores, who was acting as a, as a lieutenant, that is a proper way to do it. All right. You heard here earlier. Yes. You were here while Lieutenant Zellers was testifying, were you not? Yes, sir. And I asked him whether or not he brought this up to the attention of anybody else aside from the supervisors of Javier Coronado and Guillermina Cavazos. Remember that testimony? Yes. And he said that no, he did not. Do you remember that testimony? Yes, I do. Is that true? Uh, sir, it's not true, sir. The guy is, the, uh, the lieutenant is lying. Because he told me more than, I said three times. What did he tell you specifically three times? The same thing again. He was telling me that Coronado and Guillermina were calling in sick and that, uh, they were calling sick on their days off and the same days off and as and really I did not want to argue with him and I, I told him you know the best thing to do is to report this to your supervisor you know uh, that that is the best thing that is the best thing to do the proper thing to do and so then eventually you told Javier Coronado something right yes on that particular night when I honestly I was already tired I was already frustrated with his comments, and I told my supervisor on that particular night, uh, uh, which is Savala, Lieutenant Savala, and I told him, look, this guy is bothering me. I'm already sick and tired of him uh, about uh, bringing those comments to me. Uh, and then uh, Savala told me that yes, that he had brought it up to his attention also, and and they had, uh, that they had talked about it also, that Lieutenant, um, Zellers had talked about it in the captain's meeting, along with other supervisors there. Okay. And what, what is it that you, you told Javier Coronado? Two days later, I met with uh, Coronado, came into my shift, and, uh, and as a concern, I told him. My only intention was to tell him, 
look, this is what the lieutenant is doing. And, I, and it was a concern. I, I honestly thought that things were getting out of control. You said, though, look, this is what the lieutenant was doing. Yes. What did you think the lieutenant was doing? What he was doing, he was trying to find something, a violation or something to get these people on something. That's exactly what he was trying to do. Would that have been improper? It is improper. The way he was behaving, it is improper, sir. If it was improper, then why didn't you report that improper conduct? I was afraid. I was afraid that if I reveal or divulge, divulge that information freely, uh, information that was provided by Lieutenant Zellers, that I would that I would jeopardize my position here at the, at the McCown Police Department. How, and, how would you? How would your position at the McCallum PD be jeopardized by disclosing this information through the properly uh, created policies and procedures, man? Sir, I the the reason I'm saying this, sir, I can back up what I'm saying right now is because it happened to me before in this department. This department retaliated against me one time, and and now I, I just fear going through the same thing again. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I didn't want to report this. I, I just felt that if I, if I report this matter, I was going to go through hell again. Did you tell Javier Coronado something that was false, sir? I no. Did you say something to Javier Coronado with the purpose of somehow damaging the reputation of Guillermo Cavazos? No, sir. Did you tell something to Javier Coronado for the purposes of damaging the reputation of Lieutenant Michael Zellers? No, sir. What was the purpose of you telling anything to Javier Coronado? My sole intention was to tell this guy, to tell the sergeant to be careful that this is what this lieutenant was doing. You uh, were here earlier during the testimony of Lieutenant Zellers, were you not? Yes. And, and you heard his testimony about his 16-day suspension, correct? Yes. Were you a witness in the investigation that led to his 16-day suspension? Yes, I was. What was your role in that? The, I was a witness because uh, Officer Investigator Kevin Barron provided to me that first-hand information about this, about uh, Zellers and uh, whatever he said. Yes. All right. Uh, and uh, it was important for me to note it down and forward it up to the chain of command. All right. And 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 you did you note something down and forward that information? Up yes, to the I did. Command? Yes. All right. And was that after you had this conversation with Javier Coronado? That this yes. About when did that happen? It happened uh, somewhere uh, the early part of May. The early part of May? Yeah. So May 8th, May 12th? Say yes. All right. What happened on May the 27th, 2014? The ticket incident? All right. Okay. What did, do you know what the allegation is against you in, in relationship to the ticket case? The allegations that were made is that I... I ordered, first of all, the chief said that I had ordered this uh, officer and instructed this officer to, to change a ticket to a, from a ticket to a warning. But then later on, he's saying that I had a conversation with, that after having a conversation with Officer Reyes, the ticket was changed to a warning. Okay. So basically, that's what they're saying. That's what the chief is alleging against me. There are uh, three IDCs that you have reviewed in relationship to the ticket case, correct? Yes. One of them was from Moises Garcia, right? Yes. One was from Domingo Reyes? Yes. And the third one was from? Uh, Zellers. Mike Zellers. All right. And in the IDC from Moises Garcia, <laughs> it is alleged that uh, somebody trying to get out. <laughs> Could <laughs> be construction center. This was a PD. I'd be worried. <laughs> we have jail there. Uh, it is alleged that you, uh, that Moises Garcia says that you told Domingo Reyes, 
You instructed him, ordered him to change the ticket, right? That's right. Did you do that? No, sir. Moises Garcia also alleges that you instructed Domingo Reyes to place whatever ticket was changed onto your desk. Did you do that? That never happened, sir. You did call Domingo Reyes, though. Well, he called me. Yes, I called dispatch and then came acting. He called me. Ah. Explain to the hearing examiner when and under what circumstances you called the dispatch for communication with Domingo Reyes. I was home. In fact, that we were, I was home uh, with a worker. We were building a a a, a, a horse barn, and um, I was there. I was busy. It was a hot day, sunny. It was uh, windy. Uh, when I get a phone call from uh, Erica Garcia. Who's Erica Garcia? Erica Garcia was a person. Well, she used to work at the police department. She used to be a dispatcher, and she's the one that got a ticket from uh, Officer Reyes. Right. What's her relationship to to uh, Moises Garcia? I believe they were living together, and uh, they have two children, and uh, they're separated now. All right. So you get a phone call while you're on your day off? Yes, when I'm on my day off. All right. you're not on duty? No, sir. And you're doing what? I was working, uh, we were building a horse barn. What was the phone call that came to you while you were building a horse barn? A phone call that I called from America, briefly, she just told me you know, I, that she had gotten a ticket from Officer Reyes. And, uh, Somehow, there was some confusion that happened there. I didn't ask her. I was busy, but she just told me that she didn't know that the ticket that she had gone was a warning or not. How is that possible? Doesn't it say real clearly this is a warning or this is a ticket? I, I asked her. I told her, read the bottom of the ticket. What does it say? And she tried to explain to me, and I said, you know what? I, I was so busy. I said, let me, I'll just call the officer. Who's, who's? Would you take a break for a second? Yeah, let's do it. Is it, no, it sounds like right here. No, 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 it's not you. It's up right above us. Let's just stop for a second. Dude. Keep going. Well, let's just, let's no. just keep he's, trying. He's working. He's working on it. It sounds like there might be some construction on the storm yesterday. Maybe they're looking at the roof, I think. Um, Maybe somebody doesn't like <laughs> procedures so they're pounding on the window. Is your secretary? No. <laughs> the, uh, I want you to describe for the hearing examiner how it is that anybody could receive either a warning or a citation and not know what it says. How is that possible? Well, not understanding. Repeat the question one more time, please. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't it be obvious if it was a warning or a citation? Wouldn't it say warning somewhere on there or it, citation it, somewhere on there? It would be, it would say warning in the bottom part. But then, like the other day, I was eating there uh, at one of the local restaurants myself with another sergeant. This guy comes over and asks us, hey, my wife got a ticket with a ticket writer. Can you read it for me? Is it a warning or is it what kind of ticket is this? It, it can get confusing. And it got, I mean, she got confused. Whatever happened in there, now I understand that there was some, some sort of argument that took place there uh, between the, uh, the violator, the, the officer, and the, uh, and Erica and the mama that were there. She got confused. So, you received the phone call and she yes. said she didn't know what it was, right? Yes. Uh, what did you do when you got that call? I said, look, l let me call the, uh, let me see if I can get a hold of the officer and I'll uh, ask for clarification on that matter. All right. And after you told her that, what did you do next? I called dispatch. Since I didn't have the officer's name, I called dispatch and I asked dispatch if, uh, if the officer was working and if, uh, if the officer was not busy to call me. Uh, and then dispatch says, the, the dispatcher says, well, I don't think that he's working right now, sir. And I said, uh, Domingo Reyes? Uh, yes, we don't have him in the roster. I said, well, okay. I was about to hang up when the dispatcher told me, tells me, uh, yes, we got him here. I'll, I'll have him call you. And I said, okay. 
I wait for the phone call. Did you get a phone call? Yes, I later on, I later on, shortly thereafter, uh, we were working up there, and uh, uh, in fact, we were knocking down a, co a, co a concrete column <laughs> when he, when I got the phone call from uh, from Officer Reyes. All right. And uh, I I told him who I was. I said, hey, and I asked him, did you, did you give did you give a ticket to Erica? I said, ah, Erica Garcia. Yeah, yes. Uh, Dominguez. I'm going to ask you for clarification. I want to know, excuse me, I want to know, did you, there was a ticket, a warning or not? Because the lady did not understand that. And uh, she say, and he says, Lucas, it's a warning. And I said, thank you. And he, he says, thank you. And I, said, I just hung up the phone and I called back the lady and I let her know what happened. How long was the conversation that you had? That conversation did not last no more than five seconds did you at any time order or instruct domingo reyes to change the ticket i never did i never instructed him or told him to fix that ticket for me all right now you got a set of bars in your arm there that means you're a sergeant correct yes and what what is the rank of, of domingo reyes he's a patrolman uh, he's below you right yes he's your subordinate yes not in your chain of command but he's in, he's your subordinate yes um if did you make that phone call with the implied reason of having him change the ticket? No, sir. What was the purpose of you calling him? The purpose of the phone call is very simple, to ask for clarity. I wanted to know clarification. That's what I wanted to know, whether was it a warning or not, yes or no. Is that something, is this the first time you've ever helped a citizen on an issue of, of, of uh, something being vague? I, I don't recall, but I remember that you've asked me one time about that. If I have, um, uh, I, have asked, I have helped a lot of people uh, or a guide or, but uh, I don't recall, but uh, it doesn't, um, it didn't. I didn't find this unusual to make a phone call to ask for clarity, for clearness. I. You've been doing this for almost 30 years, right? Yes. Do you think that helping people, members of the public, well, with this? That's my job. I'm a police officer. Did you it, do this for any sort of kickback or uh, friendship or anything? Sir, no, sir. My phone call was just simply, it could have been. Uh, your grandma next door, it could have been uh, anybody, my neighbor across the street, because we live in the ranch area there. It could have been anybody that asked me, hey, can you help me with this? Can you ask for, uh, can you clarify this matter for me? If I can help them out, I don't see why not. You've seen the IDCs that are used to substantiate the allegations, correct? On the ticket case? Yes. You think that, you saw that, that uh, Mike Zellers was one of the people that made an IDC, right? Yes. And you saw that he yeah. is the one who ordered yes. Moises Garcia and Domingo Reyes to create an IDC. Yes. What role do you think he played in this case? The role that he played in this case is very simple. It's just simply retaliation. That's all what it is. That, that, that's. Is this what you feared and the reason why you didn't report Zeller's earlier comments two years prior? Exactly. Is this the reason why you talked to Javier Coronado about his problem? Yes. Is there anything else you want to tell this hearing examiner as far as why you think that you should not be suspended for a total of five days? You know, I heard the chief the other day when I sit down here, when he says that I said that I, I haven't done anything wrong, something to that effect. I still stand with that word. I haven't done nothing wrong. Nothing. How about this rumors case? This is bogus, man. You know, uh, we depend a lot on these people. We're police officers. We have a lot of faith. Well, I had a lot of faith on the internal affairs division. And they, they're supposed to protect us. And what they did to Guillermina Cavazos was uncalled for. They should have. 
they should have investigated that sexual harassment complaint that she had initially. When the captain sits here and he he gets my information, and you'll read it later on, sir, what I wrote down, what Zellers told me, and what uh, and what the young girl expressing her complaint, the impropriety for sexual harassment or some type of work hostile hostile working environment was there. But they didn't bother to look into that matter. They figured, you know, we'll get Lucas. We'll use him as a scapegoat. He was the one who started all this sandwich or whatever they want, whatever they called it. That is wrong. And, and people are, I mean, my employees, my, my, my friends, my coworkers are watching this video right now. I'm gonna tell you, what these guys did was wrong, sir was wrong. Then the ticket incident comes up, they want to smack me again. For making a phone call, making a phone call, I'm trying to help out this person to clarify a matter. You know, it's, it's, it's the system, in my opinion, is corrupted. It needs to be improved. Someone needs to come over and, and look into these matters. That, just like they did the city manager, the previous, the previous one that we had that was accused for sexual harassment. A law firm came over to investigate that matter. And this is exactly what they ought to do with this. The city ought to hire a law firm to come out here and investigate these guys. There's a whole bunch of bullies. You know, and I, I stand, I'm saying this, I stand every word that I'm saying right now. You know, it, it it disappoints me and it saddens me that, I, that I'm saying this, but I, I'm, I'm caught in this predicament that I need to come out here and also save my soul. Who I am. I've been working here for 29, almost 30 years. More than 14 years and the chief has been in this department. Chief Victor Rodriguez. I mean, I've been here, this can be bad. I was hired when I was 19 years old. I'm 49 right now. I spend have more than half of my life working here. And I intend to stay here longer. You know, I, and it gives me the power to stay here more. Because I, I just see these injustices that are going on here. Someone has to help out these guys. Someone has to bring up all these issues that I see that are wrong. You know, I, 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 I'm sorry, but I, I say this from the bottom of my, of my heart. You know, I, I'm saying this. Mr. T uh, Sergeant Torres, you've been suspended uh, for five days, correct? Yes. Are you asking that the hearing examiner uh, overturn that suspension? Yes. I'll pass the witness. Uh, Sergeant well, Torres. Technically, there's two suspensions, isn't there? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you've been suspended for three days for the rumors case? Yes. Are you asking that the hearing examiner overturn that suspension for three days? Yes, sir. You've been suspended for two days for the ticket case? Yes, sir. Are you asking the hearing examiner to overturn the suspension of two days? Yes, sir. No, that's okay. uh, Sergeant Torres, um, you and I have never met before this hearing, correct? We met before, yes. We have. On the last time, we had, on uh, Sergeant De La Rosa's case. Oh, in a different case? Yes. Okay, where you were a witness, I guess? Yes. Okay. Uh, Do you understand that in um, a, a civil, that this is a civil service department as well as a collective bargaining department under the laws of the state of Texas? You understand that, right? Yes. Okay. And that you understand that the primary function of the department is to uh, enforce the laws within the, within the city of McAllen, correct? Yes. And that's the whole point and purpose of the law enforcement personnel? Yes. Okay. And within the department, the chief, as the department head, is responsible for overseeing and managing all of the civil service personnel in the department. Yes, sir. Okay. And do you understand that within the department, there is um, an office called uh, OPR, Office of Professional Responsibility? Yes, sir. Okay. And that that department basically uh, works very closely with the chief? Yes. All right. 
And so do you, uh, would you disagree with me that the, the primary function of that internal bureau or, or department is to police the police? Yes, the proper way. Yeah, well, but yes. that's the point. Yes. To police the police. Yes. Correct? And that the department, do you understand that the department, the uh, function there is basically a complaint-driven department? Yes. Okay. In other words, when complaints get brought forward and they rise to the level of, of the chief's attention, then at that point the chief can use the expertise of the OPR personnel to look into those complaints. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. And um, these complaints can range from complaints by citizens against uh, police officers for giving tickets or using force or you know, exercising their, their law enforcement duties. Yes. Okay. So, um, and we know uh, it's, it's certainly been in, in the news about when an officer improperly uses force or improperly arrests and that results in complaints. Those matters get investigated through either an internal affairs department or in a department like OPR, correct? Correct. All right. And so that happens in the McAllen Police Department, does it not? Yes. Okay. In this particular case, and I want to see, uh, and I'll tell you right up front that I just I want to see where we're in agreement on, you know, the facts of this case, um, and where we're not. But I want to be real clear that uh, what I'm really looking for is that I'm giving you the chief's perspective on this complaint that came in and where it went. Okay. I just want to tell you that that's where I'm going with this. And so let's compare notes and see where we're on the same page and where we're not, okay? Are you with me? Okay, yes. All right. So what we have here is an officer, uh, Guillermina Cavazos, bringing forward a complaint that there are, you know, rumors being spread about her, which she initially uh, attributes to Lieutenant Zellers. Um, in terms of you know her having a, a personal or intimate relationship with with that lieutenant, you understand that? Yes. Okay. And so that complaint comes up through um, the sergeant Trevino, correct? When Guillermina Cavazos has a complaint, she goes to the sergeant. Yes. And the sergeant helps her do an IDC. Yes. Correct? I mean, you know all this now, right? Yeah, there, yeah, she assisted her, yes. Okay. And then that goes up to the captain, eventually. Yes. Okay. Now, the investigation reveals, does it not, that the source of her complaint is initially, in other words, what gets her upset is that she is confronted by Sergeant Coronado about this relationship. Yes. Correct? All right. And uh, uh, Sergeant Coronado is the one that confronts her about her alleged relationship with Zellers. Yes. Correct? All right. And the source of Coronado. It sounds like right here. Right? I think he's right above you. From where I'm sitting, it sounds like it's up there, but yeah. I, feel, I don't I know. I feel it right here, right? Yes. I'm sorry, I thought we had taken care of that. They're working on it. They're going to stop working. All right. Thank you. So, so what the what the investigation reveals is that. Guillermina Cavazos' complaint about Zellers is based on something that, that in, in terms of what happened in, in 2014, that was um, said to her by Coronado. Yes. Right? That's my We're understanding. Not in disagreement about that, correct? That's my understanding. Okay. And, and, 
in turn, in turn, what Coronado knows, he knows, or, or thinks he knows, he got from you. That's what he's complaining. That's what, yeah, I mean, that's what he claimed. What, what he thinks, what, what, his, what has been planted in his mind about a relationship, about some relationship in the past between mm -hmm. Zellers and, and Cavazos, Coronado has now gotten from you. What, inf what, what information, sir? Well, you're the one that talked to Coronado about being careful about Zellers. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so, uh, what, what ex so in other words, what I want to be clear about is that Guillermina Cavazos is upset and brings forward a complaint based on something Coronado confronts her about. Okay. Correct? Yes. I mean, that's the record, right? Yes. And what Coronado knows or thinks he knows, he got from you. What is it that he got from me? Well, that's what I wanted to ask you next. Okay. What did you tell Coronado? Well, I did not tell him what he states in his statement. Well, what did you tell him? Did I, I did not say that he was, uh, Zeller was jealous, that he was out to get hit or... Or can I read the? Can I read the uh, yeah, I mean you can open the tab there if you want, and uh, yeah. if you need to refresh your memory. But uh, I think that's what we would like to know. On what picture? Uh, well, all these affidavits are in uh, under. Most of them are under tab three of the first OPR case. Is that on? Uh, but let, let me let me do it this way. If you turn to tab four, okay. Let's look at your statement, and let me use that as a reference. Okay. okay. Let's talk about your statement. Which is on uh, which is at page forty-five. Yes, thirty. 31? No, page 45. You were ordered to give a statement in this case, correct? Yes. Okay. And so we okay. go to page what, what page is it on? Or in tab one? 45. Uh, use the numbers at the bottom. I'm going to help you. John, will you? Or you want to do it? Yeah. Tab four of the first case. <laughs> At page 45. Oh, say, go ahead, sir. Okay, so, so you've been ordered to give a, a, as part of this investigation, you were ordered to give a statement, and the, and here at uh, page 45, this is your statement, correct? Yes. All right, so let's work off of what you say instead of what other people are saying. Um, and what I was asking you was, what exactly did you tell Coronado? What I told Coronado in that... What I told Coronado that particular day was that for him to be careful this is what, what uh, Zeller was doing and also that the fact that... Uh, that he had been seen, he had, he had been seen, uh, uh, the, the Lieutenant Zeller had been seen uh, Officer Guillermina in the past. Okay, did you, now in this statement here, you go into a lot of detail and you say that about two years before you were assigned under Zeller's. Yes. Okay, and then you claim that in this, uh, uh, back at that time, um, and I'm just, you know, taking your statement at yeah. face value, okay? Uh, that Zellers had made comments to you about, you know, a uh, not just a personal but a sexual relationship with this op with this officer with Cavazos. Yes, that's okay. right. And that, um, you know, there's some other uh, 
you know, kind of salacious details in here about, about that relationship. But um, this is what you're saying you were told two years before. Yes. Okay, and that you're attributing all this to Zelich. Yes, it came okay. from him, yes. And, and did you, uh, and just to be clear, did, that, did those comments that you're attributing to Zellers two years before all this, did those concern you? Coming from a, a ranking officer? From, from him, yes. You did? Okay. Did you report that? Yes, I did not, sir. Okay. And so, um, even though you had some concerns about it, you did not report those that behavior or that conduct by Zellers? I did not, but I told him to stop doing it. Okay. Well... Okay, fine. You told him yes. not to do that, but you did not. It did not. Uh, you did not exercise your discretion yes. to report this up the chain. And that's what I wrote down on my paper. Okay, so, um, so then you say here that two years later, um, we have this situation where Zellers, as a lieutenant, is monitoring sick leave utilization. Yes. Okay. And isn't it the job of sergeants and lieutenants to monitor sick leave utilization? It, it is, yes. Okay, I mean, that's part of the job duties, yes. right? Yes. Because sick leave is for being sick. Yes. And, and the department has a legitimate concern about abuse of sick leave. Yes, when you have okay. proof, yes. All right, so what we have here is Zellers takes over this shift okay he steps into the shoes of a of another shift that's not his directly and he has some concerns about sick leave utilization involving these two officers Coronado and Cavazos yes okay and so so he's doing what he's supposed to do or authorized to do is he not 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 in my not in my view sir well, we, okay, so he shouldn't have been asking any questions about No, him. because I, what I knew about him, because what he had told me, because mm -hmm. I knew this guy had a personal vendetta against those people. But that's but when why. he's asking about the sick leave utilization, that's what you're talking about happened two years before. No, and about him discussing it with me three times about the sick leave. When he's asking about the sick leave, yeah. you're saying, well, I know what he was saying back then, but what he was saying was two years before. Sir, it's both matters. Okay. It's, all, it's all one in a nutshell about him discussing about all these matters in the past two years and about him bringing up to my attention about the sick leave. Okay. So if he has, as a lieutenant, he yeah. has not just the... the um, the authority, but he has not the obligation to monitor sick leave utilization. Sir. Uh, please answer my question. Yes uh, no? I'm going to answer the question. Yes, I am. Okay. Does he or not? Not in those circumstances, sir. Okay. So he, he shouldn't have asked anything? No, sir, because I knew what was behind all of that. Okay. So in your view, he what you're doing is you're saying, well, he has an ulterior motive for asking about these things. I don't understand your question, sir. Okay, that he has another reason for asking about sick leave. Yes, it's obvious, yes. Okay, it's obvious to you. It is, sir. Okay, so um, now tell us what you told Coronado. Simply, I said, this is what I told him. I told him that he had been seen Guillermina. I told him, he asked me why, and I said, look, just be careful. This guy is up to no good. Did you hear Guillermina, Officer Cavazos' testimony here that yeah. she basically hadn't heard anything about this for two years? I don't recall, but I don't well, remember. I mean, I, we have her, her, I mean, her testimony, and it'll yeah. be on the record, basically yeah. saying that she hadn't heard Okay, yeah, she had had some problems uh, in her mind with Zellers before, but nothing had happened for two years. Okay. Objection misstating the evidence. Okay, well, I mean, we, we can, the record will say what it says, but... Uh, I, 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 I don't remember, so I... So, 
Did you know that Canada, did you know the manner in which Coronado, and by the way, Coronado and Cavazos uh, either reside together or live together or, or have some kind of relationship together, correct? I don't know, sir. You don't know? I know that they're, yes, they're, I guess they're going out. Okay. Boyfriend and girlfriend, yes, but okay. they live together, I don't know. Okay. When you brought to Coronado's, when you, when you planted that, that seed in Coronado's what see what, what pl that I, he had that Zellers was saying that he had a relationship with Galas. No, I said that he had been seeing her, sir. That he had been seeing. See, her. yes, exactly what I said. Okay. Did you tell him how long ago that all had supposedly no, happened? No, I did not give any details to you him. You were vague about it. Yes, I was. Okay. Did you know that Coronado then goes home and basically confronts Cavazos about That's it? That's what I found out later on, yes. Later on? Yes. And he wasn't very nice about it either, was he? Well, he, well, I guess not. He, well, she was, did you learn that he said basically, well, I hope you don't dump me like you dump Zellers, or I hope you don't treat me like you treat Zellers. I mean, he basically threw it in her face, didn't he? Well, well I, I have no control over that, sir, if sir, he told him. You planted the seed in his mind that got him that got him jealous. Sir, that was not my intention, sir. Well, I don't know where I don't know where you come from. I uh, I want you to I'm I'm giving you the chief's point of view of yes. this case, okay? Yes. So so you planted that seed, this officer goes and confronts another officer about her relationship, and she understandably mm -hmm. gets upset. You know that now, don't you? Yeah, oh, she's upset, yes. Yeah. And there wasn't a problem. There hadn't been a problem at all at least two years until you attributed to Zellers that he was looking into sick leave because of some personal jealousy. I disagree with you, sir. Well, you attributed that. You started I'm that. I'm just thought. saying that I disagree with you. Okay, that's where you disagree with me. I disagree with okay. your opinion, sir. Okay. From the chief's perspective, that's what it looks like. Can you understand that? No, sir. I don't understand that, sir. Okay. If And so what we have here is we have um, you're attributing improper motives to the conduct of a lieutenant doing a job that we all agree he gets to do, which is monitor sick leave abuse. <laughs> Sir, Repeat the question one more time, sir. Answer my questions, okay? Repeat the you're question. Attributing, you're attributing an improper motive to a lieutenant doing a job that we all agree he, he's supposed to do. No, which sir. Which is monitor sick leave abuse. No, sir. You're not, okay. Can you understand that from the chief's perspective, that's one of the things that happened here? What happens sir? That you open that gate again, that you, you planted this notion in Coronado's mind that then caused him to go confront the other officer. And I repeat a, myself, in a, sir. In a not very nice way. Well, sir, I, if, if he told that to uh, Guillermina, I have no control over that, sir. It's not your problem. Sir, it, it's... Well, can you understand that it became the chief's problem? Can you understand that? If the matter was addressed the, cor the correct way, it, it wouldn't have been the way you're describing well, it, it right now. it was addressed the correct way, sir, wasn't it? No, sir. Cavazos complains. Yeah. She does IDC. It goes up the chain. It gets investigated, correct? It does get, cor yes. Okay. There's a, a series of, a series of OPR, IA, you know, that, uh, files that get opened here looking into who is responsible for all this. Yeah, and that was Michael Zellers. Right. Well, now, Zellers, Zellers, okay, this behavior that you, which you yourself in your statement attribute is two years old now, correct? Yes. It's two years old now, correct? All right? So, and you say it here, two years before, okay. right? Okay, and you admit that you didn't bring that behavior by Zellers to anyone's attention. I did not. No, you just basically said, cut that out. Well, I, I didn't tell him that way, in that, well, the way you're describing it, but I just told him, you know, he needs to stop what he's doing. Okay, well, whatever, I mean, however you told him, you said you shouldn't be doing that. 
Yes. But it wasn't so bad that you brought it to someone else's attention at that time. No, it was bad, sir. Okay. I just did not want to. Okay. Because of the fact that it was really, I, it was no, bad. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying that I did not want to describe that incident as I write in my report because I was afraid of being retaliated. That's why, sir. Okay. Well, for whatever reasons, you chose not to report it out. How, as bad as it was, you chose not to report it out. Yes. All right. So, um, are you aware of the uh, civil service rule that when the chief is investigating misconduct by officers, I mean, the, the, first of all, the chief gets to investigate misconduct not only based on complaints by outside citizens, but also on things that get brought to his attention internally, correct? Yes. And so this is a case in which we don't have an outside citizen complaining about officer conduct. We have officers internally complaining about each other. Yes. Right? And the yeah. chief gets to police that, doesn't he? Yes. So are you familiar with the rule in civil service that the chief cannot take action on misconduct, administrative misconduct that is over 180 days old? Yes, that's my understanding, yes. Yeah, I mean, basically if a complaint comes up, one of the first things the chief has to look at is how long did this, how long ago did this happen, right? Well, I don't know how it thinks, but I would, I would look into everything, even, well, even if it's more than 180 days. Well, would it surprise you that the chief cannot impose disciplinary action on misconduct that, that is that, that is my understanding. That is my understanding, but okay. he can still look into the matter. He can still investigate. In the case of the misconduct that you are attributing to Zellers, these things that you're saying that he, in your report, that he's telling you about you know, sexual acts with this officer and these things, two years had gone by, right? And two years had gone by. Yes, you're not in your head. Yes? Yes, sir. I All right. So, and furthermore, in this case, did you know that the, the allegations against the Zellers were investigated? Those allegations were, yes. were investigated? Did you know that? I did, I did not know that. Okay. Well, I brought them up again. Well, they were over 180 days old, for one, correct? Yeah. But they're still, going to, they're still going to investigate the matter, sir. And none of them it were is a concern. corroborated. Eh? None of them were corroborated. Sir, the reason I wrote down that information is because the captain asked me to write that information, and I wrote it down. Did you know that every, everybody that's a witness in this case basically got investigated about whether their involvement in the rumors? That's my that? That, that is my understanding. Okay. And the only, and, 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 and everyone, including Zellers, as we know from this morning's testimony, denies these allegations. Yeah, he denies it, yes. Okay. So the, the, only, the only source from, and I'm giving you the chief's point of view here. The yeah. only source of this, this thing about rumors that Cavazos was complaining about is you. I disagree with that, sir. Well, it's the only thing we have corroborated here. And yeah, you that, started it by well, that, telling Cavazos' uh, boyfriend or whatever he is, Coronado, that that you know, Zellers was allegedly making these these remarks. I mean, that's I, that's, that's I, the case. Sir, I'm, I'm, I deny everything, sir. I okay. So, did you recall hearing the chief's testimony that that uh, he had a concern here that you're not really appreciating, you know, what you let loose here? and that it, it, it caused a lot of, um, you know, disruption, I guess, in the, in the operations of the department. It upset an officer, 
there was no problem. It started a problem that, you know, wasn't there. You hadn't reported it the way, even though you claim it's serious, you hadn't reported it timely, right? You hadn't reported the other's misconduct timely. I, I did not report the truth, sir, to anybody. I was in what I wrote down, sir. Well, let me ask you about that now that you're answering that way. Yeah. You, you say, well, I didn't do it because I was afraid of yes. retaliation. Okay. Now, the retaliation, I mean, it sounds like you, you've been disciplined once before on some matter. Is that what you're talking about? No, it was another matter, sir. All right. Did you get, did you get disciplined before? No, it's a matter uh, that led into something else here with the city of McAllen. And when I was here as a police officer. Okay. Did you get fired or something, or what happened? No, I didn't get fired, sir. Okay. What, you're alluding to some kind of retaliation. I'm not really sure I know what you're talking about. Well, oh, okay. You're asking me. I'm going gonna, gonna to ask you. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to respond to the question. It was a whistleblower lawsuit that I filed against the city when I was a sergeant, uh, police officer here. How long, how long ago was that? That was more than 10 years ago. How many? About 10 years ago. Was Chief Rodriguez the chief? No, he was not the chief, but he came in into the matter when the, the lawsuit was in litigation. Okay, so something he happened. He testified in the court. Something happened with you under a prior administration. Yes. That's what you're talking about. Yes, and the chief was there also to testify in my case. Okay, is that the source of what you're saying? Well, that's, uh, that's my justification for not reporting. Sir, that is the reason why. And that, that case was, was so big with, with me that it has been carrying, it has still carried in my heart. That when I, this came across me, it's the same thing again. And it's happening to me right now. You might not see it, sir. But I'm seeing it. This is what I went I'm, through. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing but it seems what, to me that you don't understand, Mr. Can, Navarro. I'm seeing what we can, I'm sorry. I'll let him finish. Are you finished? Go ahead, sir. Okay. I'm, I'm just working off, you know, the document and record and, and what we can establish, what we can support, okay? And it, it doesn't appear to me that there's really any dispute here that 